Hey guys, this is Rob with another Revit electrical video for you. In this lesson, we are going to cover tags, one of the greatest things in Revit that I've found. So if that interests you, let's get right into it. So here we are back in our beloved electrical tutorial project that we've been learning in. So let's uh, review what we've done so far with tags. We've, we've thrown some tags on things like, like this. This is a piece of equipment. And we threw this tag here, which is a smart tag, and it reflects what this equipment is called. If you were to look at the properties of this, under description, under type mark, we use type mark here, fire pump, that data is reflected into this smart tag. So, of course, if I was to change this from fire pump let's say this is fire pump one okay it automatically changes in the tag so smart tags are very powerful of course in revit we can tag that we can tag things like this meter center has a smart tag uh, the main distribution board panels even things like home runs have a smart tag associated with them so we can tag lots of things and we can have different kinds of information in those tags even on a lighting plan for example that was power here's lighting we have here a light fixture and it's tagged with a fixture type tag a and its home run is tagged with a panel and circuit so as you can see very useful but how do you know what a tag is going to reflect and can it reflect different things we're going to look at how to assign different data to your tags and how to apply different tags to the same piece of equipment i'll call your attention up top to the annotate panel and over here there's a section called tag if you click on the drop down tag it says the loaded tags and symbols you can list the tags and symbols that will be used for each element you can only have one type of tag automatically get used, but you can have multiple kinds of tags within your project. For example, down here under electrical. Electrical equipment is using our company electrical equipment name tag, and the fixtures, which are receptacles, um, equipment connections, uses the custom electrical fixture type tag. Now I can change which of these tags are used for electrical fixtures by going to this there's some built-in ones device circuit device circuiting device panel tag so if i just clicked on one of these built-in let's say circuit tag and say okay if i was to apply it to this receptacle go up here hit tag by category and it gave me a little one which is just the circuit number without the panel I know some people like to put circuit numbers next to receptacles. That's how that can be done. But now every time I click on a receptacle, I just get the circuit. And maybe I want something different on there. So, so let's say this piece of equipment here, which ends up being a motorized door, MD1. Right now, if I were to tag it, it's set to the circuit. So I can move that around. How can I get it back? Let's say I didn't have this tag. How can I get it back to tag not the circuit numbers, but the actual name of the equipment, the type. Well, I would one way to do it is I'd have to go up to this drop-down I showed you, go down to the electrical fixtures, and change it from a device circuit tag to be the custom fixture type tag. That changes which tag is going to be automatically used when I say tag by category. So then I have that, and I can put a leader on it. But that is very cumbersome to go back and forth like that. So what I would say is once you have each type of tag into your project, like I have both of these now, now I can switch back and forth by just doing create similar. So if I was to create a similar circuit number tag and go to a piece of equipment like this or a piece of a fixture, turn off my leader, now I'm tagging the circuit. And if I was to go to create similar to the actual type. Now I get a type tag, which for this receptacle doesn't make sense, but you can see how you can switch around to different kinds of tags just by using create similar. So there's a shortcut from having to go up and change which type of tag. The other thing you can do is once you do have a tag like this, you can go over to the right. Hopefully you can see underneath my 
camera, um, electrical fixture type tag, and you can do the drop down and change it to a different kind of tag for that one instance. So I can call it a circuiting tag, and there we go. So there's a number of ways you can change the tags. So that's how you use these things. Same thing with lighting. But I want to get a little deeper into this, go under the hood behind these tags and show you the smarts behind them. So if you're a more advanced user and you're fine with editing families, we will get into editing these families and show you how you can customize these tags. Oh, and by the way, if you find this information useful, you can help spread it to other people by checking that like button. And if you really want to uh, come back for more, just hit that subscribe button. Appreciate that. Thanks, guys. One important thing to note is there's different kinds of tags like we talked about. For example, if I was to click on this ATS here, it if you look over here, it is actually an electrical equipment tag. So it tags equipment versus this little one. On the right is an electrical fixture tag, so it tags fixtures. So you have to keep that in mind that we're tagging different kinds of categories. So we want to make sure that we are editing and creating the proper type of tag to begin with. So I would suggest let us look into taking this out of the box Revit electrical device circuit tag. We will edit it to give it a different look and a different content and just see how that you know what's what's behind this thing so let's go ahead and go to edit family up here we have the fixture tag selected so we get into the family editor very simple it is just a number one and what is this click on this and you can see that this is a tag label which means it's smart it can read parameters of the fixture that you're tagging so let's go into that label. Let's get into the under the hood there and see that there's a number of category parameters that we could put into this label. Out of the box in Revit, it comes with just a circuit number. Very simple. But it can be any of these things. It can be these codes, names, comments, costs, descriptions of some electrical data, a model. Uh, you've got the panel, a type mark, type name, all these different things. So that's how you can build up a, a label that goes into a tag that can contain any of this. If you need a tag that has 10 different things in it, go for it. You can add these parameters, separate them with um, some spaces and add suffixes and prefixes, whatever you want to do. So, you know, use your imagination if you really need a tag that says a lot. And it may even just be a tag that you don't have in a production view, but it may be a tag behind the scenes that helps you remember the data within an element for for calculations or just for future reference so what we're going to do here is we are going to say we want this to be more than a circuit number we want this to have um elevation from the level so let's let's just have an elevation from level tag that maybe we'd want to put that on you know a receptacle that's mounted high so let's get rid of the circuit number and we are going to put elevation from level and use the right arrow to drag to drag it into here and this you can have prefixes and things like that a sample value i like to put in something that just indicates you know what it may say we will say one foot six inches as a sample value and suffix we can do something like above or a f f or above finished floor is a common abbreviation apply that okay so as you can see that's what our labels gonna look like in our tag now let's also just get fancy here for demonstration purposes and say that we want some kind of a graphics around this thing not just this so for example let's say we want to add uh, even just even just a box now you can change the font here tag label um, we could create different kinds of things, but I'm just going to put a simple box around it. So we can go to some create and we can create some lines over here. And we can use a line, different line tools, circles and shapes. You know, you could do a hex. Sometimes you want a hex type of tag. We're just going to do a simple rectangle. And I want to make it big enough so that the text does not block it out. 
and now we notice we get an error that we cannot see what we just drew. So there's something going on with visibility that we need to take a look at. So how do we deal with visibility inside the family editor? Well, there's no VG override box and things like that to check. Uh, it's up here. If we go into manage, sorry, view, visibility graphics is right here. Click on that. Model categories, so show model categories in this view. Annotation categories is what we are. Now these are all grayed out and this is unchecked by default. Now this just may be a Revit thing. Click that on. Now these are not grayed out. We're trying to show we want dimensions, generic annotations, reference lines, everything we want to actually show up. Okay, now we can see our line that we drew. So that's something that if you have visibility issues, there you go. So let's go back to that. Now also I noticed that the reference planes are down here, the intersection. I could move all of this so that it's actually you know, centered somewhat down at the insertion point, which I like. Here is my border I drew around it. Now I may want this a little larger in case there's a larger dimension. So I can do that. But that simply puts a box around my label. Now I want to save it as a family. So in my tutorial here, I'm just going to, I'm going to give it a, put your company name, give it a custom name if you want. And it's an electrical, now they can say device, but we know this is actually, a, they call it a fixture. Electrical fixture, let's say height. Height tag. I only need to save one copy of that, not three. So one, okay. Save it. And then I also want to load it into my project and close the editor. So now it's loaded. Well, how do I get to it? I could go up to the tag and do all of that. Or I can simply take a tag that I already have. Let's go to my power plan. A tag that I already have. And like I said over here, drop it down and find my new fixture height tag. And there it is. And we can see that I get a strange look to it. It's first of all, it's a big tag. Second of all, it drops a line because it is such a wide, it is such a wide label. So now I can go back into this and adjust that accordingly. This kind of thing. Uh, I wouldn't put this on every receptacle, but if I had a special receptacle um, mounted high for a TV, I could put it on that. I can also throw a leader on this so that I can move it out of the way. And there's an automatic leader. So for demonstration purposes, let me jump right back into this for you. And this just shows you the procedure you go through. It's a bit of iterative uh, trial and error. So... The label itself, not just the box, but the label itself, we would like to stretch out so that it also does not word wrap. And then let's make our tag a little bit larger. And I can save that. And I'll save it, load it back into my actual model, overwrite the existing. There we go. So that's an an idea of a tag that's custom that reflects whatever you want any of those parameters within that family and hopefully this gives you an example of what you can do and how you can customize tags like I say use your imagination if you have company standards that you follow or you have a different let's say a different shape for a mechanical equipment um, as you can see this two line label blows right through my symbol so maybe I need a larger symbol things like that but that is the simple solution how you go through and customize these things to do whatever you want and you can change them around and use them from now on if I say create similar now I'm putting a height tag for everything and some things you know this, these are not fixtures so they don't work their equipment but anyway hopefully that gives you some good insight into how you can get the tags you need and how to use them so until next time.